From the University of North Dakota, this is Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Hello and welcome to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy. The last time the Sioux were swept by a non-conference opponent was four years ago. Well, it was deja vu all over again last weekend in Maine as the Bears win twice. As always, we have a full lineup for you on the show. He's one of those players who does all the little things that coaches appreciate, fans sometimes don't notice. He's Jason Gregwire, and he's the subject of our player profile. Also, never in his wildest dreams did he think he'd wear a Sioux jersey. Well, he did, and he was pretty good while wearing it. We've got a story on former Sioux, Tim Scarproof. Stick around, we'll bring in Coach Haxtall to discuss the series in Maine, but first, here's a question, and you try to answer. Who reached the 100-point plateau faster than any other Sioux player? The answer and more when we come back. You're watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Voller Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. Sioux football team hosts Lamar on October 30th at the Alaris Center. Tailgating fires up at 8 a.m. with opening kicks set for noon. It's time to taste victory. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! You've never seen fast. You've never held it in your hand and unleashed it with a fingertip. Never watched pixels whip by at one gigahertz and had your neurons struggle to keep up. You've never seen fast because you've never seen this. The Droid Incredible by HTC. It's nothing short of its name. Buy a Droid Incredible with Flash and get any phone free. Basketball season tickets are on sale now. Call 877 Before the break, we asked you what Sioux player reached 100 points faster than any other. The answer, Troy Murray. He reached 100 points in just 50 games. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy with head coach Dave Haxtall, and we're going to talk about the series in Maine. And Dave, first of all, uh, the Black Bears were in the top 10. A lot of people, they were expected to be uh, number two in Hockey East uh, behind Boston College. Were they anything different than what you expected? No, Tim, they were, they were a good hockey team. We knew that, and, and they definitely are a top 10 team right now in the country. They've got, uh, uh, as we talked about last week, real good team speed and skill throughout their lineup, some premier players, and, uh, and they played hard. They played very well in their building, so there was no surprises as to what they did. Didn't start ver real well for your team as we take a look at the highlights here from Friday night's game that ended up in a 7-3 win for the Black Bears as uh, they came out of the shoots and scored a goal in the opening minute of the game. Yeah, they, uh, they right off the opening uh, draw, they came hard, and uh, within uh, the first minute, they, uh, they scored a goal. You know, we, we were sleepy. We were back on our heels. This is, uh, you know, a uh, one-puck battle by them. Uh, you know, net front left alone, and a uh, pretty easy goal uh, for them. We didn't make them work real hard for this one, uh, and, you know, we gave them, we spotted them two or three before we got the first one and uh, should have been able to right the ship at that point in time, Tim, but just couldn't seem to hold and maintain our uh, composure and our level of play uh, in order to get ourselves back in the hockey game. Dave, after three goals, you pull uh, Brad Eidsness and go with Aaron Dell and goal. What was your thinking at that point? Well, twofold. I didn't think Brad was, uh, was sharp. Uh, you know, at that point in time, uh, we, needed, uh, we needed the next save, and at that point in time, I thought the, you know, the, best, uh, the best move for 
uh, for everybody was to uh, to get Aaron in there. Unfortunately, you know, he went in and, uh, you know, his first uh, 10 minutes of play were not as sharp as what they need to be when you make a goaltending change. Uh, you know, to his credit, Aaron really worked his way into the game and played very well uh, the latter 30 minutes, and that's why he started the next night. Certainly a positive. Uh, at the end of the game, we saw Brad Malone's goal from behind the goal line, a positive for him, not real good for the main goaltender. But for Brad, who had 40-plus uh, family and relatives in the stands, I guess that was one positive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you look at little things, I guess, but obviously, uh, you know, at that point in time, uh, we still, uh, you know, with a few power plays that we had after that point in time, we did have a chance, you know, throughout that 60 minutes, to get ourselves back in the game. We just didn't execute well enough. Uh, and that's preparation. And that starts, uh, that starts and finishes with me. Saturday night then, uh, game number two in the series, hoping to get a series out, or get a split out of the series at any rate. And uh, one thing for sure you got in this game was you start Aaron Dell, and Aaron Dell uh, gave you the performance you were looking for, didn't he? He did. We got off to a good start. I really liked our first period. Uh, we we played well. Uh, you know, the, the grade A scoring chances uh, were, uh, you know, were significantly in our favor in the first period. It was a good period of hockey for both teams. We scored the first goal of the game. Uh, you know, I think we we were our own worst enemy. And uh, we spent too much energy, uh, not only Saturday night, but obviously throughout the weekend, killing penalties. And uh, that takes away from every part of our game. It doesn't allow us to use the depth of our bench, which is so important to us. Uh, and also obviously drains uh, the energy level of the guys that are on the penalty kill. That was the one thing we thought would be the edge for your team going into the weekend was the third and fourth lines. You really never got to see that, never got to roll those, did you? No, we didn't allow that to be a factor. We didn't allow the depth of our bench to be a factor for us. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, that's the net result, uh, you know, one of the net results anyway in, uh, in being in the penalty box so much. And that's something that we really have to address as a team and understand that as a as an area of strength for us, we have to give ourselves a chance to use that area of strength to our advantage against good teams. So it was a double loss in Maine. Last time that happened was against Maine. That was here. So uh, maybe you don't want to schedule Maine anymore. Well, we're <laughs> we're uh, we're going to have them back next year, and uh, obviously Yikes. those those two losses don't sit real well with us. Uh, but that uh, that rivalry will have to be put off until either later in the year or early next year. Well, later in the show, we're going to check out the WCHA standings after the weekend and break down a couple of plays from this past weekend. But coming up, he may never have thought it would happen, but I bet he dreamed about it. We'll feature former Sioux and local insurance executive Tim Scarproof. That's next. Football team hosts Lamar on October 30th at the Alaire Center. Tailgating fires up at 8 a.m. with opening kick set for noon. It's time to taste victory. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! The play is under review. Hey, take a look at this. This online course is awesome. Yeah, I gotta see that again. With waterfall hunting, you're trying to get the birds to come to you. You're picking the field, setting up the decoys, hiding in blinds. You're making the calls, trying to get their attention to make them come to you to get within range. That's where the real challenge lies, is bringing them to you. A rewarding experience would be a customer coming in, telling you their success story that you were able to help them out with. I'm Dave Averly. I'm a waterfall expert at Shields. Tickets are still available for many of the exciting University of North Dakota Fighting Zoo home hockey games at the REL. Support your team and get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! The insurance puzzle. Each piece is specific to you and your business. Each part fits in its own way with only one combination that works best. Every organization has its own individual insurance puzzle. The key is to find your very own solution. Voller Insurance can help. We've been tailoring insurance solutions since 1947, providing VIP service one business at a time. Let us help solve your insurance puzzle. Voller Insurance, Grand Forks, Fargo, Bismarck, Minneapolis, Sioux Falls.
Welcome back. Many hockey players dream of playing in a big game in front of family and friends. Well, today we introduce to you a man who played college hockey in his hometown and is now giving back to the community that helped make his dream come true. I grew up right here in Grand Forks, played all my youth hockey here in Grand Forks. I mean, I grew up watching you and the but at the same time, I grew up watching my brothers play a lot of high school hockey and, you know, they won the state championship when I was 10, 11, 12 years old. And, you know, really, the, the, my goal was to win a state high school hockey championship. Weber, and that was Tim Scarperud with that tough angle shot. Out of the blue, you're like, oh, I guess I'm coming to UND and definitely a dream come true because I definitely dreamt about it, but I never thought it would ever happen. I remember that first time I stepped on the ice at the old Ralph it was an exhibition game against Manitoba. and. The chills and the, and the just goosebumps that you had stepping on the ice, that's a feeling that I'll never forget uh, that first time I stepped on the ice. <laughs> my second year in, in the AHL, I, I tore my ACL and then once uh, had to rehab the rest of the year and then we came back home and decided it was time to, to start a family and, and start the real world. Paid receipt. Okay. There's the binder. Well, I work here at Baller Insurance in Grand Forks. I've been here for four or five years. Sell insurance, insurance agent here in town. We focus a lot on commercial insurance, personal insurance, and, and uh, been here for four or five years. You know, my wife's a teacher in town here. She's, she's uh, loves the Grand Forks school system. And it just, it just made sense for us. We're both from Grand Forks. We're high school sweethearts. It just made sense for us to come back to, to Grand Forks and raise our family. Hey, Ann, this is Tim from Ball Insurance. Good, how are you? Well, I was elected to the park board last week. Um, you know, I was very happy and pleased that uh, people around the community are, are have faith in me to, to help out and, and give back to the community. I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, I got, I got a lot of, out of all the, the park board activities. It's going to be good to, to give back and hopefully expand on what they're doing. Anything that we can provide to youth to uh, get them involved, it, uh, it really will help out the community. I think my biggest thing is, you know what, just work hard and have fun. There's a lot of things that are out of your control. Uh, just go out there, have fun with it, and work hard. Not a lot of people will get a chance to play uh, where they want to play or end up playing where they want to play. But you know what? There's a lot of life lessons that can be learned from, from sports and activities. And you know what? Have fun with it. Grow some relationships and, and just work hard at what you're doing and, and whatever happens, happens. Tim should have been recruited by the UND golf team as well. Pretty good scratch golfer, as a matter of fact. Teams up with his brother Chad in the state two-man best ball tournament each year, and they've won a couple of times as well. Well, the Sioux have three shorthanded goals already in this young season, with a couple coming in Maine. Stay with us. We'll take a closer look with Coach Hackstall next when Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey continues. Basketball season tickets are on sale now. Call 877 Tickets are still available for many of the exciting University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux home hockey games at the REL. Support your team and get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! The Fighting Sioux football team hosts Lamar on October 30th at the Alara Center. Tailgating fires up at 8 a.m. with opening kicks set for noon. It's time to taste victory. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! Dreams are forged. 
Character is tested. Teams are united. Champions win here. Watch the crowning of a new NCAA Men's Frozen Four champion April 7th and 9th on ESPN and ESPN2 in high definition. For information, visit NCAA.com slash Frozen Four. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey with head coach Dave Hackstall. I'm Tim Hennessy. Not much to show really yet on the WCHA standings hack, but uh, you kind of get a little feel for what might be going on. Huh? Well, it's pretty early, obviously, with uh, with the standings, but you know it's already it's already tight throughout. You can see that. Uh, you know, at this time of year, you really start to, you know, uh, at least I do. I concentrate on the loss column. Uh, you know, you, you want to stay out of that as much as you possibly can. Obviously, it goes hand in hand with build, building the other side of the column, but it's going to be a tight race all through the year. Let's take a look at a couple of things from this past weekend. Short-handed goals, you got one uh, each night against, uh, against the main Black Bears, and a very impressive one, I think, uh, the opening night with the freshman Derek Rodwell showing a little bit. He was sitting in the penalty box serving out uh, Andrew McMillan's uh, uh, five-minute, Andrew McWilliams five-minute penalty. Major penalty comes out and uh, darts in on the goaltender and scores a nice backhander. Well, it's a great speed play on his part. You know, he just he came out of the box uh, around our blue line and just grabbed a loose puck and uh, came in and made a real good play at a high speed. This is a real tough play for a goaltender to handle if, if Derek executes it as well as he did. That's a real tough play for a goaltender to stop. Did we know he has that kind of speed? Yes, we, we did. We, he's a very power, He's one of the more powerful skaters that we've seen, and he's done a great job in, uh, in his short number of games here this year. And speaking of powerful skaters, uh, Matt Fratton scores a, a shorthanded goal for you as well. A couple of things come into play there. His strength, his strength on his skates, his shooting ability, uh, it's kind of the total package we've been seeing in most of the season as well. Yeah, you know, that was just a great individual play by Matt. Now there's small small areas of his game that he needs to improve to become, you know, a, a really dominant player in terms of all three zones. Um, but in terms of what he's doing offensively and the effort that he's putting out every night, he's been a great player for us. When he scores uh, that shot, we talked about it before, I'm not sure if I can recall back anybody else that could choose him, except maybe you. They could shoot the puck like that at North Dakota. I mean, that, the snapshot. We've had a lot of boomers with the snapshot, as uh, going back to Andrew Kozak even. But uh, that snapshot, my goodness. Well, he can shot. do it. He, he does it effortlessly in stride, and I think that's what makes it real tough for goaltenders to handle. He nearly scored after we saw that shorthanded goal that he did score on Saturday night. He uh, he nearly scored another goal identical to that a few minutes later that would have made it a one-goal game. So he's uh, he's dangerous coming down that side. Uh, you know, I like the things that he's adding to his game. I think he's adding a little deception to his game. Uh, instead of always coming down and just uh, shooting that puck off the wing, he's, uh, he's pulling up and delaying and finding late people. So he's, you know, he's even early in the season here, he's adding to his game offensively with the things that he's doing. All right. We'll talk about uh, a few more things a little bit later on in the program, but right now, he could have gone to school about anywhere that he wanted to, but he brought his meticulous skills to UND, and we're happy about that. We'll get to that, but first a look back in our Fighting Sioux history. He's from Cartwright, Manitoba, and renowned for his penalty killing while at UND. Erwin Martins won a national title at North Dakota, but where is he now? We'll have the answer and more when we come back. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive where they learn from leading experts, share in discoveries and create knowledge. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Basketball season tickets are on sale now. Call 877 91 Sue. 
As summer is left behind, fall brings new adventures. Make them better with a vehicle from Dahlstrom Motors. Whatever adventures come your way, Dahlstrom can make the difference in making your life a smooth ride. The real thrill of hunting is the fall season. The thing I enjoy most is watching the dogs work and seeing their enthusiasm. It's a great experience to get a chance to watch the birds flush, get a good shot, getting a good retrieve, a good point, a dog that backs. It gives me a lot of satisfaction to see a nice shotgun go to somebody that truly appreciates the aesthetics of fine rifles or shotguns. I'm Jack Pruitt, and I'm a pheasant hunting expert at Shields. The answer to our where are they now question, Irwin continues to follow Sioux hockey as well. In fact, he was at Saturday night's game in Maine. Kind of a pressure reliever for him, I think. Well, the next time you watch a Sioux hockey game, pay attention to number 17, Jason Gregwire. He does so many things so well, including interviews. Welcome back. We're with North Dakota forward Jason Gregwire, a junior from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Jason, welcome. Thank you very much. Winnipeg, Manitoba, home of many uh, former fighting Sioux uh, and uh, some current fighting Sioux. Uh, how much did you know about some of these guys that came to North Dakota as you were growing up? To be honest, Jonathan Taves was the only name that kind of rang a bell. I, I played against his younger brother. Not and James himself. Patrick? Who's that? <laughs> oh, sorry. No, it's uh, obviously the Zajac family now since I've been through the program and uh, known Darcy. But uh, Jonathan Taves, he's obviously a household name now in Canada. But uh, I mean, even Winnipeg when I was younger, yeah, I played against him in uh, my minor leagues and stuff like that. So it uh, kind of opened me up to the college game. Typical upbringing on skates when you were four, and four, yeah, playing that. hockey by the time you were six. Yeah, so. I had my uh, best run across the street at a rink in his garden every winter, and uh, that's where I learned all the skills. And well, my mom came up and helped me. Jason, it seems odd that even in this day and age that a lot of guys say it's an outdoor rink somewhere, whether it's a pond, whether it's a river, whatever it might be. It isn't a fancy indoor arena where they started everything. Huh? No, never is, especially in Winnipeg. It's I probably got five or six outdoor rinks within five, ten minute drive, so it's just, it's unbelievable. If one's too busy, just drive on to the next one. So when did you get really into organized hockey and maybe kind of figure out that this might be a pretty good sport for you? Oof. I'd say probably 13, 14, kind of a little before midgets there. I started playing uh, some good levels. I was captain of my team and uh, really started opening my eyes to the WHL, which is the biggest thing in Canada. It's what you learn about most. And then uh, in college hockey when I was later 15, 16 years old. How'd you stay away from the WHL? Thankfully, I have a very grounded father. He just, for some reason, he knew something and I didn't. And uh, go figure, him, teenager, I knew everything in the world. But uh, he just kept telling me, hold off, hold off, play your options, and uh, talking to different coaches and different people. And uh, now looking back, it was the best thing I did. Then on to the USHL, right? Yep. Yeah, that was uh, when I was 17, went to Lincoln, Nebraska, played for Lincoln Stars, and uh, I cannot say one bad thing about that place. Just the organization, the town, my uh, housing family. I just had a perfect situation there. There was a chance you were going to go play for the Denver Pioneers momentarily, wasn't there? Momentarily. It, uh, made a quick decision there, but uh, can I say I'm more than happy. I made the best choice changing, and I'm um, fighting soon and couldn't be happier. Jason, did you play any other sports as you were growing up? I played lacrosse for several years, and that's one sport I give a, a lot of my, just when you're in front of the net playing hockey, you get a slash in the back of the legs, you can't retaliate. In lacrosse, that's where I learned all that, because you can slash, you can hack, and there's no penalties. But as soon as you turn around and hit them back, then that's a penalty. So I learned no retaliation, and uh, I mean, that's just a big part of my game now here. And obviously, you're looking forward to, to a professional career in hockey. Exactly, yeah. And uh, I mean, I still love my pastimes. Fishing is one of my favorite things to do, golfing, but uh, Hockey's number one. Jason, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Actually, before North Dakota, the first school Jason Gregoire visited was Bemidji State. It's finally uh, home sweet home. And who better to open up with than the Denver Pioneers? Some thoughts about that with Coach Hackstall coming up.
Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Voller Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. That is a great online course. Tickets are still available for many of the exciting University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux home hockey games at the REL. Support your team and get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! Studio One is a television show produced by staff and students at the University of North Dakota. Here you actually get to do your own stories and you get to go out and talk to people and interview and learn about the cameras and everything that goes into like a live television production. I mean, it's incredible. Give it a try. I mean, even if you're not broadcasting communications major, anything, I mean, it's worth it. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. With head coach Dave Haxtell, I'm Tim Hennessy. Coach, uh, you start the weekend in WCHA series, your first home weekend, that's big. Uh, you gotta take care of business in the WCHA at home for sure, don't you? Well, the biggest thing for us is, uh, you know, are, are the games Friday and Saturday night and our performance level coming off of a uh, subpar weekend in Maine. It's an important week of practice for us. It's a real important week of development for our team. Um, and, and I think critical games on, uh, on Friday, you know, take out, uh, take out the entire picture of the WCHA, just really looking uh, in terms of our own team. These are very important games and a real important week for our team. Whether it's the, uh, your players know the other players well from, from Denver or something, there's something to this rivalry, isn't there? Well, you look over the last uh, several years, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of tough games between these two teams. Uh, you know, there's been no love lost between these two teams yet. I think a great deal of respect just in terms of uh, uh, of the you know, the competitiveness that we've had in our games over the last uh, 10 years. So it'll be a great, uh, it's a great weekend. There's a lot of things going on for the fans to be excited about this weekend with uh, Ed Belfour night and Hockey Hall of Fame, or uh, you know, through the weekend and the UND Hall of, uh, Hall of Fame. Um, but number one, first and foremost, will be uh, our focus level going into these performances Friday and Saturday night. Three weeks on the road, uh, I'm guessing the guys are looking forward to being at home finally. Uh, huh? Great to be back at home in front of the, the best fans in college hockey, Tim. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Well, we want to thank you as well for watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Next week, we'll review the Denver series at the Ralph. We'll also look at a new facility built to help young skaters develop their game. That and much more on our next show. On behalf of Coach Hackstall and the Sioux Hockey team, we thank all our fans for watching. See you next week on Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey.